Hey guys, welcome back to Better Together Life. I'm Kelly Brotherton and today I've got something very special for you. Let's talk about like the cherry on top of the Sunday special, the beautiful bow on top of your fantastic present. Today I want to talk to you after three years of living in and very harshly using our Ikea kitchen. We're going to review what it's been like and the good, bad, and ugly of installing Ikea in your home. In fairness, I think a lot of the concerns are that Ikea is a really cheap build, that you're going to get kind of crummy quality, and I don't feel that after three years. So the good is absolutely the quality has held up. I think it's a great frame around our refrigerator. It has another side over here that I think makes our house feel distinctly like this is the kitchen. So when you're living in a small space and it's just one big open area, you wanna make sure that you have distinct locations and having the siding around our refrigerator totally feels that way. Here's a little secret about our kitchen. Almost everything in this kitchen is a standard build. So these are the standard drawers. You can just pick them out, put it together. A normal size dishwasher, which we needed as a family of six, and quite frankly, I kind of regret not having two now that we have so much work to do with the milking and cleaning so many more dishes. The farmhouse sink is my absolute favorite. It's one of those things almost like Man, if you build it, they will come because when we first moved here and put the sink in, we didn't even have chickens. And now we have so many animals and so much produce growing. I feel like legit farmer girl. Okay, the last standard drawer is right here. And I think it was something if I were to do again and build a much larger kitchen, I would absolutely put drawers over cabinets everywhere. It's so easy to access our stuff. In fact, what we did to maximize space was in this top drawer, which holds mostly just dishes. And then we had a secret drawer for what will drive some of you guys bananas. But this is our junk drawer for all the utensils. So there's very little order here, but if you can handle it, this is the coolest part about Ikea builds, is the secret little top drawer that you can put in whenever you're installing your kitchen. So that's like my good and my beautiful and my best, but I promised you good, bad, and ugly. So let's get into some of the negatives that we've experienced in this kitchen. Here is something I wish we'd known overall in our tiny house build. I wish we had known that we need to plan things out before we install integral parts of them. So when we were building out this kitchen, we're like, oh yeah, we're gonna put our oven here, our fridge here. We didn't think about the cabinetry. And so we had a casualty because of that. And it's this sort of odd little cabinet. Everything else that I've shown you has been totally standard, right? But this cabinet is custom. And what that means with an Ikea build is that the cabinet was cut down from a larger cabinet to fit this space and then just retrofitted with this door. It was already going to work in some other type of organized kitchen, right? The cabinet front fits something different. But with it being on the end, this is not as stable a countertop as I would like. And the cabinet door itself actually came unscrewed from the hardware. So the only solution that we had, and it's actually worked out pretty great, is to use liquid nails and just fix this hardware onto the door. It probably happened, I don't know, eight or nine months after we bought the cabinet, after we bought the kitchen. And then once we put on the liquid nails, we've never had a second issue. So it still has the slow close. It works great. But that would be the ugly is that the customized cuts, this just would have worked better in a different configuration in our kitchen. So plan, plan, plan ahead of time. The only other negative, I know that maybe that cabinet thing might feel a little snobby, but I want to be honest. And that was an issue. The only other issue is the kickboard actually came loose on, again, this same sort of problematic corner in the kitchen. And so we lost a little end cap there. I would say nine out of 10, nine and a half out of 10. I love our Ikea kitchen and kind of feel like a little underdog, like against all odds, our contractor friends, 
some people who had advised us in other parts of our build were really a little concerned that this was not going to be a kitchen that would hold up over time. I have a great friend who's been living in her house for 12 years with her IKEA kitchen. She loves it. Another great friend that we met through YouTube, she loves her IKEA kitchen. And I can join their club and say, I love this kitchen.